looking closer for Jeff George. And, and that kind of conversation may seal his fate. How would you characterize your stay with the Falcons now that you've had some time to reflect back on it? Uh, I reflect back on the one year we went to the playoffs, and I'm proud of that. But everything else, you know, you just want to forget. You know, it's uh, there were some bad times, and uh, you know they probably feel the same way. But uh, I've, you know, you move forward. I'm in a great situation in, in California and with the Raiders, and uh, yeah, it's a perfect fit. You know, when you take the field and you're announced, <laughs> and you come out for that first play, the reaction is going to be a chorus of boos. You know, it's not going to be any different than the way it was in the past. You know, it was, it was the same way last year and two years ago. And you know, even when we went to the playoffs, you know, we, we, you know, I got booed. So, you know, I feel right at home. I don't know whether I'd be fired up with the booze, Tom, or, or get excited, you know, get down about it. But Jeff George definitely, he knew it was coming. Jeff actually telling us yesterday that uh, no real animosity for the fans or players of the Falcons. His gripe was with Atlanta management. In fact, he and June Jones, believe it or not, have remained good friends. Harvey Williams in motion. Napoleon Kaufman, the lone setback. A play action fake. George steps up, throws incomplete behind his intended receiver, Napoleon Kaufman. Here's the way they line up offensively for the Raiders. Steve Wisniewski, a six-time Pro Bowler, anchors the uh, offensive line from that left guard spot. Jeff George, Napoleon Kaufman, the leading rusher. Jet, Tim Brown, and Ricky Dudley. Brown and Dudley especially off to great starts. In fact, Tim Brown is the leading receiver in the National Football League with 19 receptions, 313 yards, and three TDs in the first two weeks of the season. George chased from the pocket and throws it at the feet of Davison. Well, the Atlanta game plan has been to apply the pressure on Jeff George, and they can do it. This front four is off to a terrific start, including Archambeau, who leads the NFL with four sacks. Atlanta overall has ten sacks in the first two weeks of the season. Jesse Tuggle, the perennial leading tackler for the Falcons, the last eight years he has led them in tackles, and Ray Buchanan, who came over from the Colts, one of the best cover men in the NFL. And there is Lester Archambault on third and ten. He'll be coming after Jeff George. Three wide receiver formation. George under pressure. Still on his feet. But to downfield intended for Kenny Shedd, but incomplete. And on the opening series, the Atlanta defensive pressure pays off three straight incompletions by Jeff George. That's Williams in motion. And the pitch is to Kaufman. Kaufman gets a block and cuts through a big hole. Cut back. Kaufman down the sideline with Tim Brown in front. Napoleon Kaufman to the five and touchdown. One yard Rambo by Napoleon Kaufman. And you look at this play here, Harvey Williams comes down, he really hits below the waist, which on a crackback you can't do. But it's just all Napoleon Kaufman right here with the run. Some excellent block, and Tim Brown's trying to find out who he should block on this. But Kaufman uses his blockers very well coming down the field and able to get into the end zone before he is tackled. The big uh, tight end Ricky Dudley was also all the way downfield blocking as Cole Ford lines up for the extra point attempt. <laughs> Through the uprights to tie the game. 61 yards by Napoleon Kaufman much to the delight of Jeff George as the Raiders tie the Falcons at seven. Chandler fumbled the exchange. It's loose, picked up by the Raiders. Then they fumble. Still on the turf. Scramble for it. Falcons, I think, got it back. Wow, what a turn of events. And they talked about this yesterday. They've been working on it time and time again. We talked to Fortin about the center quarterback exchange, and they said they've had problems. I mean, the preseason, everything went well, but lately they've been missing up, missing the handoff as far as between the quarterback and the center. That's something that you can't have happen. Bert Emanuel saves the day for the Falcons. 
as he pounces on the football when it looked like the Raiders might have been on their way to a touchdown. Eric Turner was the man that had clear sailing, and suddenly he loses it. It's really hard to tell exactly who was at fault there because Chris Chandler had almost looked like he wasn't ready for the football, but a fumble, and they're lucky to get that one back. You know, a doubly fine play by Bert Emanuel because he knocked the ball loose from Turner and then pounced on it. So a disaster averted for the Falcons. They have it with a first down. The one thing Chris Chandler has in his mind right now, don't fumble the snap, and you don't want to do that as a quarterback. First down pass complete. Emanuel, he's the man of the hour for the Falcons. He catches the ball at the 44-yard line of the Raiders. Bumped out of bounds there by Terry McDaniel. They open the second quarter with Morton Anderson attempting a 20-yard field goal to give Atlanta the lead. Puts it up and boots it through. So Anderson from 20 yards away puts Atlanta back in front. Bert Emanuel recovered the fumble that kept the drive alive. It's 10-7. You're watching the NFL on NBC. There's a flag on the flag. Play action fake. Chandler for the end zone and the touchdown. Made it look easy. Jim Kelly called for that a long time ago. O.J. Santiago with the touchdown catch. His first NFL touchdown. The end zone replay here. O.J. Santiago being able to come back and get across. That's the key to the play. Him being able to get through the defensive line and get past the linebackers with a play action fake and come underneath the defensive back that is near the end of the end zone. Excellent run by O.J. getting underneath it. So here's Anderson now for the extra point. Presented a golden opportunity by the Raiders penalty. Atlanta is able to take advantage. And Anderson hits on the extra point attempt. So instead of 10-7, it's now 14-7 thanks to a Raider penalty. 14-13 left, second quarter. And Jeff George is still hearing the boos echoing through his helmet as he comes back onto the field. <laughs> and the thing is, as a quarterback, you're going to realize when you're on the road, you're going to get booed. But boy, I, maybe at the beginning of the football game, but throughout the game. What about your play call here? Well, so you got you have plenty of time. I don't know. The way they're going offensively, maybe I'd stay a little concerned. Maybe a screen pass. Tim Brown, 11 yards and a first down. Hit immediately by Ronnie Bradford. Why wouldn't you send Jet? They don't seem to be able to cover him. Why don't you send Jet down the field again and take a shot? We can do that right now, but what they're doing is they're sending the guy underneath to bump a little bit of the receiver, and they got a guy in the back, so they're not going to let the big play happen. I mean, the Raiders probably thought that uh, last week, and look what happened. The guy got behind him, and that was the ball game. Jeff George throwing the ball to the turf, stopping it with the incompletion with 13 seconds left. George, Brown wide open center of the field to the 25 yard line. They got it one time out left timeout. and they use it with five seconds remaining. Jeff George connecting on 34 yards to Tim Brown and it has put them in field goal position for the last play of the half. Aragus to hold, Ford sends it on its way and it's good. Clutch kick by Cole Ford as the Raiders end the half with a successful field goal. We'll see if that'll give Joe Bugle's troops a lift. Longest of the season for Cole Ford. It's good. Dan Reeves and the Falcons surrender a field goal on the final play of the half. They pick up the blitz and George throws it downfield. Caught. Jet. Touchdown. Well, they say in Jets just a speedster that he doesn't have hands. He puts that to rest with a one-hand snatch, a 55, 51-yard touchdown. To Jeff George again, touchdown. rolling off his back foot, not being able to step up into the football. He's got to realize he's got Jet, Jet out there with speed. He's got to beat, just get the football out here. And what happens, the defensive back looks back for the football, and Jet stays focused, hauls in a great catch for a touchdown. That was all Jet right there. Underthrown pass, but I'll tell you what, as a quarterback, you'll take it every time. That and a good job of giving George time by picking up uh, the rush. 
Here's Ford to add the extra point. And it's good. James Jett finally connecting with Jeff George. And for the first time today, the Raiders have the lead. This play here was designed when Jeff George checked off Napoleon Kaufman coming up. And what he's doing right here, he comes up. He knows who he has to block. The one thing Jeff George is able to do is be able to have time to throw. An excellent block with Cornelius Bennett by Coffin. Result, excellent catch by Jet. And as you can see, he knows he was lucky <laughs> to have that one. That looks at it all. That's for sure. Now the Falcons try to come from behind. Hansbard. Hansbard breaking free down the sideline. Beautiful cutback. Brian Hansbard off to the races. Can they catch him from behind? Yes, at the three. Eric Turner, Lionel Washington in hot pursuit. And the Falcons, who had been unable to rush the ball successfully all day, break the rookie Hansbard free for 77 yards. So much for that 25 yards rushing in the first half. But Hansbard, excellent blocking out front. And you can tell by the speed he has, he's able to cut back right here. And then it's just a foot race. He utilizes his blockers right here, Terrence Mathis. And it's just a foot race to the end zone. Hanspard, third round choice this season from Texas Tech. Now six rushes, 95 yards. And the uh, play is stopped. Don't quite know why. We've got a clock correction. A clock correction. Thank you very much. So while they correct the clock. Byron Hanspar. Please set the game clock to 10:05. 10:05 to play another one out of bounds. Thank you. Hanspar, a Red Raider All-American, the Doak Walker Award winner, one point had 16 consecutive 100-yard rushing games. A licensed Pentecostal minister, second-round pick for the Falcons, and a former prep All-American from suburban Dallas. First and goal. This is where the Falcons have had problems earlier, but trying to get the ball into the end zone inside the five. Play action fake. Chandler's pass to Christian for the touchdown. We talked about being conservative down here. What happens? Play action pass. Being able to hit Christian, not in the flat. I talked about this earlier, having a hot receiver, sometimes your fullback, a play action pass. And as you can see, the linebacker wasn't able to get out into the flat. Excellent Christian, play calling. Christian with his first touchdown as an Atlanta Falcon. Just like that, the Falcons bounce back to recapture the lead. Impressive. Morton Anderson with the extra point. And it's good. So Jeff George strikes. Chris Chandler answers. Things heating up in Atlanta. Always tell the receivers on third down, at least go three to four yards past the first down marker. Aragoose pulled down a high snap and boomed one to Kinchin at the 15. Slammed down at the 25 yard line by Folston. 58 yard punt. And if it's a if that's fumble counts, let's see. And no, they say he was down. No fumble, or do they? Well now. Confusion on the field. One official said no. One official said touchdown. And about three or four to have no idea. <laughs> that was Kenny Shedd that took it in. The players ruled a fumble and a touchdown. Wow. Don Hakes, the field judge, his call prevails. Right here, you see him falling down. Yeah, it's, it's a close no, call. I don't no, think, the, I don't, I don't no think the ground could cause a fumble. Boy, Raiders got away with that one. That is no fumble. The ground cannot cause the fumble. Shed takes it in for the touchdown, and the Raiders catch a break. Pretty much all, all counts is one official thinking it's a fumble. Cole Ford for the extra point. 
And where is instant replay when you need it? Dan Reeves suddenly is in favor of instant replay's return. A gift for Oakland. It will be a 52-yard attempt. Officially 51. 51-yard attempt by Morton Anderson to tie the game. From 51 yards, Anderson sends it. Got him. Tied at 24. First down play for the Raiders from their own 42. Napoleon Kaufman gets the corner. Brown with a block. Kaufman down the sideline to the 10 and a touchdown. What a move by Kaufman. He showed his speed there down the sideline. At least three Atlanta Falcons players had this is speed. This is what you call speed coming down. They had the angle on Kaufman down the sidelines, and he just turned on the afterburners. A dazzling move by Napoleon Kaufman to break free. 58-yard touchdown gallop. In the first half, he had a 61-yard scoring run. He could have been stopped at the line of scrimmage, but an excellent move to get outside. And as you saw, unbelievable speed. I thought for sure he's at least going to be tackled on 35, around the 35-yard line. Cole Ford for the extra point. And one wonders if Atlanta, after the injury to Bolden, were uh, not quite emotionally ready to return to play because Kaufman went 58 yards. Watch this move. This move's been put on David Brandon right here. Boom! Able to get outside. And I got a little excited here, Tom. I was like, there's no way. Look at the angle that the players had on him. And he's able to run it, outrun him to the end zone. Two long touchdown runs by Napoleon Kaufman today, who now has gained 142 yards for the game. Well, he turns the corner right here, and I think he realized it's just turning on the afterburners and trying to outrun him to the end zone. Even the speedy Ray Buchanan unable to catch up to Napoleon Kaufman. <laughs> Jeff George excited about that one. I don't know if I'd be... Hey, I guess I'd pat my offensive line with two, but that was all Napoleon Kaufman right there. But as a quarterback, boy, those plays... That's what you like to see, the long run. Well, a point to the uh, to the stands. He has about 100 tickets. I don't know if he's pointing to his family or perhaps towards some of those fans who have been <laughs> booing him all afternoon. Uh, if I was a bet man, I'd probably say he's pointing to his family. What do you think, Tom? I don't know. <laughs> Chandler's pass complete. Another first down, this time O.J. Santiago. But Chandler pays the price. It does draw a flag. Chandler's down, too. There are actually two flags on the play. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, number 96. Defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Darrell Russell roughing the passer. Right here, see Chandler coming back. You realize he has man-to-man -man coverage as seen right there. And this is a late hit. That's just not, that's uncalled for right there. George changes the play. Plenty of time on the play clock. And now the flags are down. And a scuffle breaks out. Jeff George in the middle of it. Chuck Smith was there too. They're the former teammates. And the last time Jeff George checked off, there was a touchdown. And I looked down there, and I saw what he saw. 101 on the outside. Speed against a DB that they feel they can beat. I'd take that too, Tom. Now Jerry Mark Bryant again is trying to uh, sort things out. George arguing his case. I don't think I've ever seen Mark Bright without a hat on. <laughs> Prior to the snap. Number 77, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. That's Pat Harlow. Yeah. 
as George was changing the play. There you see the flinch by Harlow. And Smith uh, unabated to George, and that should not be allowed to. Harlow defending him took a shot at Chuck Smith. And the third quarter will come to a close before they can run the play. That's the end of the third quarter in Atlanta with Jeff George on his return and the Raiders leading the Falcons 31-24. We'll be back after these messages from your local station, the NFL on NBC. Back to football, first play, fourth quarter, Jeff George pumps once, he's trapped, and he's down at the two-yard line. Travis Hall again, his all over Jeff George, and the Falcons have their third sack of the day. Travis Hall has two of the three. Again, putting pressure on, made a little stunt there, coming up inside the middle, but he stays with him. One thing you don't want to do as a defensive lineman, stay on the ground. If you get knocked down, get back up. Two sacks today for Travis Hall. Tolliver for the end zone. Still no call, now incomplete out of the end zone was Michael Haynes. That was a great catch and almost trying to get his feet in, but what happened there? Billy Joe just a little bit late throwing the football, a little bit too much air under the ball. He had to beat. What he has to do is throw this more on a line, over, drop it over the shoulders. Couldn't quite see his feet as they came down. Let's watch it from this angle. So Billy Joe putting a lot of air under the football, maybe a little bit sooner, but we'll see if it's a catch. Possession, nope. Good call, nice call. Tolliver with the fake. Touchdown, Mathis. Billy Joe Tolliver hits Terrence Mathis for the six-yard touchdown, and Jim, once again, a crucial block by Jamal Anderson to enable Tolliver to get it away. One thing about this play is you know it's going to be man-to-man. -man. Anytime a team's going to blitz, you know that the receiver's going to be one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and Billy Joe showed his fastball there. Anderson's extra point has tied the game. Billy Joe Tolliver directs a tying drive to clincher the pass to Mathis. And with 7 17 left, it's 31 all, much to the chagrin of Al Davis. Ford has hit his previous field goal attempt. A 49 yarder just before halftime. This one, 31 yards to give Oakland the lead. On its way, and good. Joe Bugle and the Raiders looking for their first win of the season go up by three. Now it becomes a, a very big problem. You're in the hole now, first and 15 from your own 15-yard line, trying to play catch-up down three and just over four minutes left. And don't think you have to make it all up here. Just try to get five, six, seven, eight yards. Try to at least be second in mid-range. Tolliver, ball loose. And the Falcons recover at the one-yard line. Gene Williams able to recover the football at the one as they knocked it loose from Billy Joe Tolliver. Again, Billy Joe stepping back into the pocket, but he's got pressure right up the middle from start. It's a mad scramble for the football. Excellent job by Gene Woods popping on that because this could be almost the one that puts nail in the coffin if, if the Raiders were able to recover this football. Anthony Smith just beat his man, uh, man there as they had more numbers than the Falcons could block. Now from the one, Tolliver will pass from his own end zone and he airs it out downfield. Way off target. And now it will be third and long. Tolliver will again have to pass from his own end zone. George Sefcik, offensive coordinator. Dan Reeves, 
sending in the play and uh, a tough call here. You can bet that the Raiders will be coming. Boy, when you need the offensive line to step up, that's when you needed it back then, the last play. But right now, you just have to get some yardage back. Don't try to force the ball in here and cause a turnover. Just try to get some room for the punter. There's Seven. plenty of time left. 7 of 15 on third down conversions. This, though, is a third and 29. Tolliver, if he steps out of the end zone, it's a safety, and he does. You don't want to step out of the end zone. Now that forces the Atlanta Falcons to score a touchdown. Here's a view from the end zone. And what you want to do, this is designed to be a rollout pass. But what Billy Joe's got to understand is once he's outside the pocket, all he has to do is throw the ball past the line of scrimmage, out of bounds, let the punter come in, punt the football away. What could he have been thinking of here? Does he not know the rule? What could he be thinking of? He, he stepped out of bounds and wasn't even touched before he stepped out. Yes, they were all over him. But he just stepped out of the back of the end zone. Two points for the Raiders. And now a free kick by Atlanta. It almost looked like he didn't know where he was on the football field. He nonchalantly just stepped out of the end zone. And uh, not a very smart move by Billy Joe. And uh, uncharacteristic of something that he would do. I mean, being in the league as many years as he has, being down by three points, throw the football away. Huge mental mistake by Tolliver. Now gives the Raiders a five-point lead, and they'll be getting the football with a clock approaching three minutes. And now Jeff George can only uh, kill the clock and celebrate his return to Atlanta. And there's the gesture from Jeff George pointing to the crowd that has booed him throughout the entire game. He'll keep that football, I suspect. <laughs> if he's going to boo to the crowd, he's point to the crowd. He might want to do it the whole way around the stadium. And I believe he will. <laughs> Falcons dominate time of possession, 36 minutes, 50 seconds, but lose the game. And, and look Jeff at George is rubbing it in. He sure is. I don't know if I'd want to do that. Just accept the victory and go into the locker room. Jeff George with a taunt for the Falcons fans who have booed him all day. Keeps the game ball as the Raiders notch their first victory of the season. A victory lap for Jeff George. He better hope he doesn't return to Atlanta anytime soon. And he is. You're right. He's doing a victory lap. He's going to all four corners of the end zone, and he's not stopping. Did they say this was the new, mature Jeff George? Strike that. Thank you. And we'll be back to Atlanta for some final comments after these messages as the Raiders outlast the Falcons 36-31 long time been wanting to say this and this isn't Dion's house <laughs> everybody knows that I, I talked to him and he sold this house to me so this is the, not the Georgia Dome this is the George Dome and I made sure everybody knew that at that when I took that parade lap you know he's elated that he won a football game but you should always have class dignity in, in everything that you do and, and that's why I guess the people are booing him because uh, he hasn't shown that in this you know eight nine years that he's been in the league